Matches for Night 1 of Rebellion have been announced. Tension between Rohit Raju and Gama Singh. 70-year-old action Mike Jackson, the Alabama Junior Heavyweight Champion, makes his return to professional wrestling. An interview with one half of the Deaners, Cody Deaner. All this and more coming up next on Shooting Up North with Lewis Carlin, right here on the Impact Lounge. This is Cody Deaner, and you are listening to Shooting Up North. And remember, just give her. Woo-hoo-hoo! Hey folks, Lewis here. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, Rebellion. Rebellion is coming up. And as we know, Rebellion has been changed uh, to a two-night uh, Access TV special. Uh, we'll be seen here in Canada on the Fight Network. Uh, originally supposed to be a huge pay-per-view, but unfortunately with uh, the pandemic going on, changes had to be made. So they made a few changes and uh, they taped it in um, in a studio, uh, in, not in front of a crowd. I believe it was in Nashville. Uh, the Skyline Studios in Nashville is... Uh, where they were taping it uh, so uh, a couple of matches have been announced uh, for night one and they actually announced uh, a match for night two uh, so for night one which is uh, going to be uh, airing on Axis TV and the Fight Network on April 21st we're gonna see Rhino and Tommy Dreamer against OVE now if you saw the promo on the last episode of Impact Wrestling, uh, uh, Tommy Dreamer and Rhino were saying that they're going to have a surprise, a surprise person to be their their uh, partner in the match. So I, I don't know if that's gonna if that's gonna actually happen or not. But as of right now, as of right now, from what I'm reading, it's just Rhino and Tommy Dreamer against OVE. Um, OVE's got to win this match. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing because I can't remember the last time OVE actually won a match. So. Uh, and they keep losing. I mean, they lost to Rhino and Sabu. Uh, I don't know how many times they've lost to Tommy Dreamer in, in so many different capacities. But uh, OVE needs a win here. They, they need to book to win. I, I don't want to see Rhino and Tommy Dreamer win another match against OVE. I, I really hope that OVE wins this match here. They, they need the big win. They need the big win over these uh, ECW legends uh, that, 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 uh, that, that keep running right over them, man. So uh, let's, let's, uh, let's hope uh, OVE gets the win there. Um, other matches that have been announced. There's four matches that have been announced. Uh, Kara Hogan against Kylie Ray. I know BQ is going to be happy about that because he was hoping that this match is going to take place because uh, he, he was looking forward to this one. But it's taking place. Night one, they're filming Kylie Ray versus Kara Hogan. Uh, should be a very, very good match. I'm really looking forward to that one i i don't see kira hogan winning this match um kylie ray newcomer coming in needs a big win so i'm gonna i'm gonna go with kylie ray to win that one but that should be uh that could be the the match of the night um potential to be the match of the night because the exhibition match is going to be a very good one as well as we know, it's going to be Ace Austin defending the X Division title against Willie Mack. That's going to be that's going to be fantastic. I can't wait for that one. That's going to be just terrific. I think Willie Mack is going to win the X Division title. Uh, I think he deserves it. Uh, he's been with with Impact Wrestling for quite some time now. Very very talented wrestler. I think it's time uh, for the X Division title to go on Willie Mack. So I'm picking Willie Mack to win that one. And then we have Sammy Callahan against Ken Shamrock. This should be an interesting match. This should be an interesting match. I, I, I like the ending. I really like the ending of Impact Wrestling where the ICU guys were just showing up everywhere and they were, uh, they were, they were getting under the skin. They were getting in the head, I should say, of Ken Shamrock. Uh, so that was a really good ending. Uh, so this is going to be a very good match. This is going to be a very good match. I know a lot of people, they don't give Ken Shamrock uh, his due because he's, he's over 50, but uh, he, he can still go a bit. I don't think it's going to be a long match. I don't think it's going to be a 30-minute five-star classic uh, by any means, but um, I think it's going to be a good brawl. Uh, I'm picking Kenny. Sh- uh, Kenny. I'm picking Sammy, Sammy Callahan, to win this match. And um, 
it should be a good show. It should be a good show. Uh, and these are the four matches that are going to be on April 21st. On April 28th, if they have one match announced for night two on April 28th. It's Chris Bay versus Suicide versus Trey Miguel versus Rohit Raju, uh, which is going to be, uh, which should be an excellent one as well. And more matches are going to be announced. I really hope that they that they have the the world title match. Uh, Eddie Edwards, I'm sorry, Tessa Blanchard against Eddie Edwards against Michael Elgin, because uh, that I'm predicting Michael Elgin to take the title there. But uh, I think there was. Um, um, I think Tessa Blanchard was unsure whether she was going to uh, show up for the tapings. Whether she showed up or not, I'm not sure. Uh, it's it's all been taped. It's all been taped. But I, I, I'm glad that there have been no no audience members for the fact that there were no spoilers. Uh, all the spoilers have been kept on the wrap. Nothing's been announced. No winners have been announced anywhere. Uh, so... I, I kind of like that. There's nothing, nothing spoiling it for me. So I, I don't even know if Tessa Blanchard was on the show or not. Um, but uh, we'll find out. We'll find out. And I'm sure more matches for night two will be announced uh, in the coming days ahead. So um, keep, I'll keep my eyes open for that. And you keep your eyes open for that too, because uh, there should be three or four more matches that will be announced for night two. Uh, Action Mike Jackson. I don't know if anyone that watched um, Impact that saw Mike Jackson are familiar with him but um, me being older than than most of my uh, professional wrestling friends I remember Mike Jackson very well um, in, back in the early 80s I had Georgia Championship Wrestling uh, on my uh, cable service and action Mike Jackson was uh, the Alabama Junior Heavyweight Champion and he was a he, um he was enhancement talent. He never won a match. I've never. I, he always would do well. He would always get in his good offense. He would always get his his, his moves in. But he would never win a match. I never saw him actually win a match um, when I was watching him on Georgia Championship Wrestling. Um, and he was a little guy, but he could go. He was able to go back then, and he proved at seventy years old that he could still go today. He was just dynamite against Johnny Swinger when they announced that it was going to be Johnny Swinger against M. Jackson. Just the thought of. I wonder if it's going to be Mike Jackson, action Mike Jackson. Uh, just, I was just, I, was, I, I, would, I was like, if it's Mike Jackson, I'm going to pop. And it was Mike Jackson. He walked down the ring, and um, I, uh, I popped. I popped because I, I, it's the first time I saw him in in in, in, in decades, really. And, but he still got it. He still got it. He was really, really good. And uh, most people watching, like I said, probably are not familiar with him. But um, go to YouTube, type in Mike Jackson, 1980s. I'm sure you'll find stuff from Georgia Championship Wrestling. And and who knows? Uh, I don't think it's going to be the last time we see Mike Jackson because the uh, Twitter was blowing up with um, Sammy Callahan actually started uh, started tried to get signed Mike Jackson um, trending. Uh, I don't know if he was successful at it, but I I, I um, hashtagged it a few times, and I know Michael. Elgin, I believe, was uh, no, actually, it was Josh Alexander. Josh Alexander was was praising uh, Mike Jackson on Twitter as well. Uh, so I sign Mike Jackson. Why not? I'm, I'm not saying put him in a in a full metal mayhem match match against uh, Michael Elgin or anything like that. But I'm saying, hey, you know, put him up against uh, let's see him against um, Cancel Culture. Let's see him against uh, Joey Ryan. Let's see him. Uh, um, well. Uh, I think he could hold his own against someone like Ace Austin. Uh, but uh, we'll see. We'll see if we see uh, Mike Jackson again um, in the future. Uh, like I said, you know, Scott Demore was posting, was tweeting a lot about him yesterday. Uh, so I'll say it again. We might see more of, of action Mike Jackson. Maybe he'll even... And the another thing. He was the Alabama Junior Heavyweight Champion. He was always announced as the Alabama Junior Heavyweight Champion. But... I never saw him once defend the Alabama Junior Heavyweight Title, even when he was um, when he was wrestling on um, Georgia Championship Wrestling. Well, maybe that's why he couldn't defend it because he could only defend it in Alabama. Uh, so I guess I, back then I would need Alabama Wrestling TV. Uh, I'm sure he defended it many times on if there were, if there was in fact an Alabama uh, Wrestling TV show. I'm sure he defended it many times in the state of. Um, of Alabama, but but anyway, anyway, uh, let's move on. Uh, Rohit Raju and Gama Singh. There seems to be a little tension there. We saw the little slap in the face uh, to uh, Gama Singh slapped uh, Rohit Raju in the face uh, backstage, and Raju didn't like it, and uh, he put him up against uh, Hernandez. And and Rohit Raju didn't didn't seem like he was too happy that he had a uh, when the match initially began uh, when he came to the ring it didn't look like he was too happy that he was going to have to go up against Hernandez 
and and it was basically a squash match. And now a lot of people, a lot of people um, that review Impact Wrestling were uh, were saying that why why uh, well Impact they announced that Rohit Raju has a huge um, uh, match coming up uh, at Rebellion, the match that I that that, that I announced earlier. Uh, and then if they announce that big match, why have him squashed by Hernandez? Um, very simple because they're obviously they're obviously uh, going to split Rohit Raju um, away from Gama Singh and this is how they're doing it Rohit Raju is going to keep getting upset with Gama Singh Gama Singh's going to keep slapping him and one one day one day Raju's going to get slapped he's not going to take it anymore and he's going to either clothesline um Gama Singh, or he's going to drop kick him, or do something, and then uh, the other Desi Hit Squad members will come out and uh, take out uh, Rohit Raju, and maybe Rohit Raju will bring uh, another wrestler in and uh, feud with the Desi Hit Squad. Uh, so I'm saying that's 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 what's going to happen. I wouldn't be surprised if it happens during Rebellion. Um, well, it doesn't happen. To ha- it doesn't have to happen during Rebellion. Um, I just just realized Rebellion is not the only uh, shows that they're taping. They're taping, you know, I think five to eight weeks of, of content. So um, expect to see Rohit Raju uh, break from the Desi Hit Squad. That, that's my prediction anyway. Now, in the main event, in the main event, we had uh, Tile Valkyrie going one-on-one with Tennille Dashwood. I just want to touch upon this match for a second because I was a little confused with the ending because uh, it, it was announced that Jordan Grace would be defending the knockouts title against Tyre Valkyrie at Rebellion in a full metal mayhem match. Uh, so if that match was announced, and it looks like that match still might happen, why have... Tennille Dashwood defeat Taya Valkyrie, who is going into this huge match and is uh, uh, obviously the number one contender for the knockout title. Why have her lose to Tennille Dashwood in this match? It, it just didn't make sense. Did it have to be Taya Valkyrie against against Tennille Dashwood? Couldn't we have gotten Tennille Dashwood against somebody else and have Tennille Dashwood get the win? Unless unless they uh, they want to do a uh, what they did with ODB when ODB won uh, they made a title match a triple threat match uh, I forget which pay per view that was uh, I forget the name but but uh, maybe they want to maybe they want to add to Neil Dashwood to the to the full male mayhem match I don't know just it just just didn't quite make sense to me why have Tyre Valkyrie I mean if Tyre Valkyrie didn't have to take the loss. Uh, she could have just got herself disqualified and did that whole thing with the chair and basically killed Tennille Dashwood uh, like uh, like we saw her on Impact Wrestling uh, before Jordan Grace came down and made the save. Uh, we could have had a DQ. We didn't have to have a, a clean loss by Tyre Valkyrie. Just, to me, it just didn't make sense, especially, like I said, Valkyrie going into this huge uh, knockouts title match with Jordan Grace. Now, tag team wrestling in Impact is... is it, I think it's it's doing really well right now. Yes, they could add they could add um, a few more tag teams like Besties in the World or um, uh, TDT uh, out of Canada. But if you saw the four way t- tag team match that was on uh, Impact Wrestling uh, this week, uh, it was I thought it was fantastic. Triple uh, XL, uh, Larry D and AC Romero, a team that I love by the way. Uh, we had uh, Falaba and uh, TJP. Uh, we had um, Rito Scum. And the Rascals. And it was a very, very fun match. I really enjoyed it. And I hope you enjoyed it too. Because it really showcased uh, a lot of the great tag teams that are that are in uh, Impact Wrestling right now. Another great tag team that's in, in uh, Impact Wrestling right now. A very popular tag team feuding with cancel culture right now uh, are the Deaners. Uh, the Deaners, very, very, um, very good tag team. I really enjoyed the work of the Deaners. And I had the opportunity to sit down with one half of the Deaners, Cody Deaner, recently, and we had a tremendous conversation. We spoke um, about a number of topics, uh, including Impact Wrestling, of course, among other things. And uh, that interview that I conducted with Cody Deaner happens right now. Hope you enjoy it. I am very excited today because I have a very, very special guest on the show. Uh, He is the current Border City Wrestling Heavyweight Champion, one half of the very popular and one of the top tag teams in Impact Wrestling, the Deaners. Very happy to welcome to the show, Cody Deaner. Cody, welcome to the show, my man. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to do this, too. I'm stuck in my house with nowhere to go during these insane times, so uh, I'm happy to give you some time today and, and chat some wrestling. 
Sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. Yeah, it's it's tough tough times right now, but uh, hopefully uh, everything will be back to normal soon enough, and you guys will be back in a wrestling ring really soon. Yeah, man, I'm going I'm going stir crazy, brother. Like, <laughs> what, and if I have a week off of wrestling by like the by the second week of no wrestling, I'm putting my wife and hammerlocks in my kitchen and uh starting to go stir crazy and start to play fight and (laughs) i'm just like i'm going crazy right now man i just i need to be in the ring i need to be being creative i need an outlet so i'm actually filming a lot of stuff and doing some some other projects and things right now because i got the time because i just need something i need a release so i'm really really hoping i can get back in the ring soon because i'm i'm going nuts yeah you will be i i i Mm -hmm. I really think you will be and i i kind of miss um I kind of miss uh, being a fan of uh, of new wrestling shows, but uh, I you guys will be back soon. Don't don't worry. I got I got my fingers crossed for you. I have hope, and uh, hopefully this whole stupid thing will be be done soon. Uh, yeah, but but anyway, in my Facebook feed today, actually uh, a clip popped up of you and uh, Jake uh, mm-hmm. initially getting your Impact Wrestling contracts. Uh, that you did the the video clip of you signing your contract. So it's been about a, it's been a year or, may, or over a year that you've been with Impact Wrestling. So how would you rate your time uh, so far with Impact Wrestling? Oh man, it's been amazing. I mean the the Impact locker room and roster right now is just amazing. I can't put them over enough. What an awesome locker room that we have. So supportive, encouraging one another, uh, just high morale. I just love it. So that's amazing um, in terms of the roster and the talent. And then in terms of like the office and the creative, we it's so – there's so much freedom. I guess I, I would use that word. I'd say freedom, man. Like I am entrusted with uh, – who Cody Diener is and what he would do. Uh, I'm never handed a script and said, you must say this and do this. It's just, it's very collaborative. I get to work with the writers. I get to work with the office. There's open communication across the board. So man, I, I couldn't be happier. I get to wrestle with awesome talent. I get to be in control of my own destiny and what I'm doing on the show. So, man, I mean, I, I couldn't be happier with the first year with, with my cousin Jake on TV. It's been awesome. So tell me about the formation of the Deaners. Uh, what brought you and, uh, and cousin Jake together uh, as a team? Well, the thing about Impact Wrestling is it's a two-hour television show. So there's two hours of content, and there's only so many people that can be on the show. Um, really, there's only so much time to feature talent. And as someone from the outside looking in, I realized but when you're watching the show, unless you're in the heavyweight title pitcher, you might have you have room for maybe one other kind of storyline if you're going to be a singles wrestler. So the chances of, of getting on that show on a regular basis as a singles talent, um, the, it's more minimal. The time is just more minimal. And at the time, there was a lot of opportunity um, as a tag team wrestler. So I've known, I've known Cousin Jake for many years. He's an amazing talent on the indie scene. Uh, he's also extremely attractive, just like me. Um, so we, <laughs> we, we mesh really well, both style-wise. Our attitudes about the business are the same, and, and we look alike, um, which I don't know if that's a derogatory comment towards me or him or both. I don't know. But uh, we've actually been told by numerous people how uh, how much alike we look like. And uh, I actually, when we debuted on TV, I had family members of mine telling me, I didn't know that your brother was a wrestler too. Uh, I have an older <laughs> brother. And people thought he was legit my older brother. So, wow. uh, I mean, the resemblance just works. Uh, we're both from kind of, we're both from small towns. Our, our upbringing, upbringing is very similar. So, yeah, man, um, I'm happy to uh, bring him on board uh, as part of the Diener family and give her on TV. So that's kind of kind of the origins of it, and it's been a wild ride so far. So what what are the main goals for the Deaners? Are you looking to – I know you've had some great matches with the North. Are you looking to get your hands on the North again and hopefully the Impact Wrestling World Tag Team Championship? 
Absolutely. I mean, that's the immediate goal. If you're a tag team in Impact Wrestling, I mean, that's got to be your goal, obviously. But yeah. it, it's a worthy and admirable goal because, man, the amount of talent that's come through that company and held those belts, I mean, the North included right now, it's just amazing. It's, it's have such a good a good tag team division right now with, you know, everyone from Marino scum to the rascals to Falaba and TJP, um, the Daisy hit squad. There's just so much good talent, um, and characters. Everybody's different. Uh, everybody is hungry and man, the North got a target on their back right now. And they definitely got a target from the Deaners right now. That is our goal is, uh, we want to win gold and impact. And that's definitely, that's our, the Deaners new year's resolution resolution for 2020 is they get our hands on those impact tag team belts. Well, like I said, you guys had some great matches with the North, and I, I look forward to uh, to many, many more matches uh, with the Deaners in the North. Uh, always, uh, always a fun time when you guys are in the ring together. Now, how would you compare your current run with Impact to your run back uh, with TNA uh, when you were with um, ODB? They're so different, um, the, both because what I'm doing on TV is so different, and the companies itself is so different um than it was back then so both were equally satisfying both were equally as fun um but i would i shouldn't even i shouldn't say equal i had fun in both but i would say that my current time in it is um creatively and wrestling wise much more satisfying because my first run even though it was very a lot of fun um and odb was awesome to work with I didn't get a chance to get in the ring and really show what I could do between the ropes wrestling wise. My character 10 years ago was definitely a comedic character that wasn't supposed to be able to wrestle. I was brought in under the guise of being a wrestling fan that didn't know what he was doing in the ring. So I couldn't okay. really show, I couldn't really show what I could do um, in the ring. And that was a lot of my fans for that had seen me on the independent wrestling scene at the time. I'd been wrestling for 10 years when I got signed. Um, back in, in 2009 so it, it was a disconnect for a lot of my fans to watch me on tv because they'd see me on independent shows you know as the champion of a promotion and having 30 minute 40 minute main event matches and sure. then uh i'm kind of fumbling through a, a four minute tv match where i'm supposed to try to look like i don't know how to wrestle so um <laughs> yeah. that was that was a challenge in itself but it was a challenge i was i was up to and and had fun doing but now it's the best of both worlds. I still get to be entertaining, um, which is what I think wrestling's all about. But I also get to get in the ring and mix it up and really show that uh, I know how to go in between the ropes. So this this run right now with my cousin Jake has been very satisfying, both creatively but also, you know, wrestling wise as well. Now you're a great singles wrestler. Uh, I've been to many uh, many shows where you've been uh, headlining. Uh, can you defend the, the Border City Wrestling uh, Heavyweight Title a couple of times? Mm -hmm. um, would you Would you like to eventually split up the Dinos and maybe go solo with Impact Wrestling? Um, I've always seen myself as a singles wrestler. I think most guys do. When I became a professional wrestler, my goal was never to be a tag team wrestler. Uh, I think like every wrestler, we all have egos to a certain extent and we all see ourselves as a champion um for any promotion we're in that's just the mind of a wrestler we are egomaniacs so i i've always seen myself as a single star but right now i'm having a lot of fun in a tag team but to say that you know at some point in the future do i see myself as a singles competitor of course i do i i, I think in t in right now in today's wrestling climate to have a tag team that always stays as a tag team forever it's very very rare um so i mean I eventually i see a splitting up um and doing our own thing and, and showing what we can do singles wise but i don't see that happening for a long time i think there's a lot a lot a lot more we can do with the deaners before i start thinking about uh what i want to do on a singles capacity i think we got a lot of years uh, left with the Deaners before we see that. And then, of course, yeah, when that runs its course, whenever that may be, then sure, you, you, you do your you do your singles runs with the guys. And Jake is also a very accomplished single star on his own right, too. So we both got a lot to prove singles-wise, but we 
I, we got more to prove right now as a tag team than single stars. So that's our focus right now is let's focus on what we can do as a team because we, we still got so much more. We haven't even scratched the surface on what the Deaners have to offer Impact Wrestling. Haven't even scratched the surface yet. All right, on the last episode of, of Impact Wrestling, you got a big win over uh, Joey Ryan. Uh, your thoughts on Joey Ryan and, and cancel culture? Oh, man, I I think I admire Joey Ryan so much for um, taking on this creative challenge. Whenever you have something that is as over as his character was before and what he was doing with the dick flip and that whole thing, I mean – he has made a lot of money doing that and to come to a national wrestling company and being willing to stretch his creativity and try something brand new. That's an offshoot of what he was doing before. I mean, I mean, I, my hat's off to him. It's really easy in wrestling. If you find something that connects with the audience and kind of gets over, it's easy to just try to ride that out for as long as possible um, which he has been doing, but he's willing to like. Okay, I'm not just gonna I'm not just gonna be the dick flip guy forever. I'm willing to try something new and kind of mix this up and and uh, still do this. So he he still works on on the independents and a lot and still is the Joy Ryan that everybody knows and loves. But he's trying something different on TV and willing to stretch himself creatively. And we've we've done a lot of creative stuff with them. There's so much to be done with that cancel culture thing. It's been a lot of fun working with them. And there's more to come um, in terms of the Deaners and cancel culture and everything we've done so far um has been fun and creative and i'm excited for for everybody to see what we got coming uh coming down the pipe awesome and I'm, I'm looking forward to that as well uh, another wrestler i want to ask you about uh he was on my show uh rj city when i asked him who mm-hmm. his favorite opponent was he said you were his favorite all-time favorite opponent so what what's your opinion on rj city oh he, he's my least favorite opponent <laughs> <laughs> you tell him that next time you're on uh oh man no rj is awesome he is uh oh how do i even describe rj he's so fun to work with because he doesn't think like a wrestler um he doesn't think in terms of you know inside the box wrestling formula he's always thinking of ways of breaking out of the formula and breaking out of the cliches or using a wrestling cliche in a different way and a tongue-in-cheek way like it's so much fun to take this thing that we both love in professional wrestling but try something new and different because man we all know Wrestling's been around for a long time. It's probably one of, one of if not the oldest sport ever. Um, there's been a lot of wrestling. It's hard to do something new. But anytime I wrestle RJ, the goal is let's do something new and different that's never been done before. And then with the amount of wrestling and that's happened uh, up to this point, it's hard to do new things, man, but we're always up to that challenge. That's always his goal when you get in the ring. That's my goal when I get in the ring with him. So always looking for creative and fun ways to do something new. And anytime I've been in the ring with RJ, whether it's as his tag team partner or against him, we've done that. So it's a blast wrestling RJ City. He's very underrated talent. He should he deserves to be on television with a major company right now, making millions of dollars. He's that good. Absolutely, absolutely, I agree with you. I'm a big fan of RJ City. Um, now, I've been to a number of your shows, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, mm-hmm. And one thing I've always seemed to, to many, one thing I've always seemed to see there is the kids. The kids love you. The kids, <laughs> they always, they almost always seem to have a crowd of kids around you. That's got to be a great feeling uh, that that these kids are looking, uh, looking up to you like that. Yeah, man, I, I, I can't really describe it or or know why it happens. It does. It happens any show I go to. Um, I think um, if I was to kind of analyze it, psychoanalyze why that happens, because I don't know why, but I, th- my thought is, I, whenever I think of wrestling, my immediate first thought of it is the way I viewed it when. 
I was a kid. Like I loved it. It was, it's been my, it was my first love. It still is my first love. I love it more than anything other than my wife and kids. It's like wife, kids, you know, wrestling. So it's, I, I love it. And my, I first fell in love with it when I was five years old. So when I am at a show and I see kids, I know how they're watching it because that is so ingrained in my mind how I watched it when I was their age. So I just, I think I just have this connection with them because I still love and watch wrestling. I'm still a fan of wrestling the same way I was when I was a kid. I, my, my passion for it, if anything is even more than it was when I was a kid. So I, I think they just somehow the kids are very intuitive. They just see that and they, they see that I just want to have fun and love it the same way they do. And they're drawn to that. That's, that's my only, my only explanation other than the fact that I also love kids. I know a lot of people don't like kids. I love kids. I got four kids of my own. I I got four kids of my own. I love kids. I try to try to live my life. I'm a big kid. Ask anybody. I'm a big kid myself. Um, so I, I guess, I guess that's the, what it is, man. They're just drawn to me. They see themselves in me and, uh, they want to be a part of the fun that I'm having because wrestling's all about having fun, man. And if I can get kids involved in what I'm doing, that's what it's all about, man. So as I was reading that actually Hulk Hogan is your all time favorite wrestler. Hell that, yeah. That's, that's, so I'm gonna ask you your favorite your all time favorite Hulk Hogan match. Oh, that's too hard. I'm gonna I'll give you the answer by the you know, seven year old Cody Diener answer was okay. uh Steel Cage match King Kong Bundy. Uh, okay. WrestleMania two. I I yeah. wore that tape out, man. I watched that tape Jeez, at least I watched that match at least five times a day, every day. My mama, what do you want to do now? I want to watch Hulk Hogan. She'd rewind that tape, she'd press play, and I'd watch that thing. I watched it five times a day, man, <laughs> that match, over and over and over and over and over again. And when I when I watch that match now, I still think of – I I can still f- remember and feel being in my living room, sitting in front of that TV and being mesmerized, mesmerized by that match and thinking every, even every time I was convinced still to this day, I'll watch that match and think, Oh no, Hulkamania is going to die. This is it. <laughs> and he fires up and comes back and hawks up and, and, and wins every time. And it's, Oh, what an impression that makes on a, on a five-year-old mind, it still gets me. It yeah. still gets me. And, I mean, every, any Hulk Hogan match I watch, I'm a fan of. But that one has a special place in my heart. Yeah, they, I, I love the war to set on the score with uh, with Roddy Piper. That's, oh, yeah. that's one of my all-time yeah. favorite matches. Just everything uh, that was going on in that match was fantastic. Yeah, man. Roddy Piper is uh, – I didn't appreciate him as a kid, right? Because as a kid, I hated him. But then when yeah, I got yeah. into, got into the business and started training, I started to realize how unbelievably awesome Roddy Piper was, and how without a Roddy Piper, I wouldn't have loved Hulk Hogan as much as I did. So I really started to study Roddy Piper, and I've stolen a lot of what I do off of Roddy Piper. He's been a huge influence on me, and I've actually had the pleasure of uh, getting to share a locker room with Roddy Piper a few times before he passed. So oh, wow. Um, oh, wow. to to you know grow up and idolize him and then share a locker room with him was uh, was pretty cool. He was a I really really he was a really awesome man. He was really really yeah, awesome. Yeah, that's that's. that's that's he's my all-time favorite wrestler, Roddy Piper. Yeah, there you go, brother. Like yeah. I, I'm, that's some good taste you got there because he's oh, he's amazing. I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. Press for time. You have to get going shortly. I just want to touch upon one more thing. In addition to sure. wrestling, you're also a, a professional, uh, motivational speaker, in which you speak to thousands of youth. Uh, so, what message do you try to get across to uh, to youth uh, during your um, speaking engagements? Uh, my my message is pretty simple. Um, it's dream big. I, when I was five years old, like I said, man, I was a Hulkamaniac and I wanted more than anything to be a professional wrestler, but I grew up in a tiny little small town in the middle of nowhere, uh, population of less than 200 people. 
uh, with four trailer parks. <laughs> so I just grew up in this small little <laughs> rural middle of nowhere town, man. But I had this big dream. I wanted to be a pro wrestler and nobody believed I could do it. Uh, cause nobody from this, my town, uh, it's called Port Bruce, Ontario. It's not even on okay. some maps. If you, people try to Google it, they might not even be able to find it. There's, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's honestly that small. It's a nothing. It's a little wow. nowhere place. And, uh, but I had this big dream and I went on and I did it. I made it happen. So I encourage youth when I go in to, to dream big and not let anybody tell you you can't do what you want to do. Because I grew up in the middle of nowhere, was told that I couldn't do it, and I did what I wanted to do anyway, regardless of what the world told me I was capable of. I, I went and I made it happen. So that's my message to kids. I just share my story with them and encourage them that uh, just because they might live in a small town or go to a small school or people might have uh, small expectations for them that does not mean that they have to have small expectations for themselves they can dream big and they can make it happen so uh, i go into elementary schools talk to young kids i go into high schools um i even talked to some some businesses and, and have um, gone into uh, to businesses and done some corporate deals um that message is a message that anyone needs to hear no matter what age is that whatever they set the mind their mind to it's possible don't let don't let the negative creep in focus on the positive rather than the negative and you can you can accomplish anything so that's really my the simple really quick version of what i what i preach to kids and uh, i love it man and i'm so glad that i found speaking um i I almost get the same adrenaline rush that I get from a wrestling match that I get to I get when I get up in front of kids and, and speak to them. It's I'm so so blessed to have found uh, a second career in professional speaking because I love it. That's so awesome, man. That's so awesome. Um, but before we wrap this up, because I know you got to get going, is there anything you want to anything you want to plug? Uh, any T-shirts or anything that uh, you want to plug? Social media. Uh, sure, feel free to sure. plug away anything, man. Yeah, man. I. Uh, I, I love being interactive with my fans. I, people can find me on uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, just at Cody Diener for all of those. Um, we've already touched on my professional speaking. I'm loving going into uh, schools. So hopefully, like I said, when we're talking about it at the top of this, when life gets back to normal, which is hopefully sooner rather than later, I'll be able to get back into schools and talk to crowds. Um, all of my booking information and contact for that can be found at CodyDiener.com. Um, yeah, man. And I'm even though I'm with Impact Wrestling on national TV worldwide, uh, I'm also still available for independent booking. So any promoters listening to this that want to book me on their show, please reach out to me. My booking email is bookcody at codynear.com. That's uh, that'll go straight to me. And the other thing that we didn't touch on, which uh, people can go to codynear.com and all the information is there on this too, is a couple of years ago I started something called Giver for Charity. And it's uh, okay. a fund. It's a fundraising effort that I started a couple of years ago to try to raise money for local charities uh, across Canada. And uh, to date, I've raised over thirteen thousand dollars for different charities all across the country. Uh, and I pick I pick a new charity every few months. And there's been a few recurring ones that are really close to my heart, um, like a center called the Lansdowne Children's Center for uh, helps kids with autism. Uh, the Rumball Camp for the Deaf um, is another one that I've worked with closely, and also some community living centers helping people with special needs. So, yeah, there's a couple of charities I've worked with and are going to be working with again this year, helping raise money for them. So people can check out codeer.com. There's a link there for Giver for Charity that tells you what that's all about as well. And uh, every few months I have a new fundraiser happening for a different charity. So if people um, are looking for some worthy causes to to donate some money to, they can always check out uh, codeer.com and my Giver for Charity efforts and and hopefully support the different amazing local charities that I work with through that. That's fantastic, man. Uh, well, Cody, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I, I really hope that you guys get back in the ring soon because as a fan, I, I, I miss you guys in the ring. And uh, I, I have my fingers crossed that it's gonna this whole coronavirus thing is going to end soon. And I wish you nothing but the best of luck. I, I'm confident that you and Cousin Jake are going to have those Impact Wrestling Tag Team titles very soon. Don't don't tell Josh Alexander I said that, though. I don't want him coming <laughs> at me. But, uh, All right, brother. That's between me and but, you. Uh, but I feel... Uh, <laughs> 
I, I appreciate, man. I appreciate the time. Um, I'm glad that we had this chance to talk, and I hope you're right, man. I hope to get back in the ring and be given her again soon. Thanks a lot, man. You will be. You will. will you will be. I, I feel it. I feel it, man. Uh, so All I right. want to thank everybody for joining me today. This has been Shooting Up North. I want to thank my guest, Cody Diener. And until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye.